lot of a lot of heavy drug users have had parents who've had issues themselves who have come from backgrounds where they haven't had a stable family perhaps something like that you know well, I grew up in homes and that all my life and uh, well I was a child and then from homes it was streets and prison and stuff so I couldn't really imagine me in my circumstances. Uh, no, you know, and I was rebellious anyway, you know, somebody had, you know, it's like if someone's, it's like if a kid sees a sign saying wet paint don't touch, they've got to touch it to make sure it's wet, ain't they? So like if somebody had just turned around to me and said don't do smack and I'd never heard of smack before, I'd have probably done it anyway, so. To me as well, like, you know, heroin, um, used to blank out a lot of things, like, you know, because um, when I was younger, like, you know, um, I was abused when I was very young, like, and that, um, you know, used to play on my mind a lot, and I used to think about it a lot. And when I used to use heroin, it would blank it out. But then um, my key worker, Laura, I, I told her about it. She said, like, you know, you need to see somebody who's experienced in that line. So then I went up to the CADT next to the CAU and I seen the counsellor, Liz, and then I told her everything that happened when I was young. I got her off my chest. And as soon as I told her what had happened and, you know, because I blamed myself for what happened, like, you know, and she, like, you know, said to me, it wasn't your fault, you was only 11, et cetera, et cetera. You know, then I started to deal with things. Like, you know, I had to deal with the, the um, how can I say, the emotion, not the emotional, the, the things that happened in my life in the past before I could move on. But as soon as I dealt with them, I found it a lot easier then to move on where I am now, like, you know. When, when I was younger, you know, as soon as I had my first dig of smack, my first injection of smack, heroin, I, I realised, you know, that initial wrapped in cotton wool feeling you get. Do you understand me? But it, it, it's almost like going back in the womb, isn't it? It's almost like in back in utero, yeah? And I couldn't think of anything better when, you, when you're trying to hide from something. I couldn't think of anywhere that it would be safer than in your mama's, mama's stomach again, or feeling like you're back in your mum's womb, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, no, it, it was... depends what you use smack for, but me, it's just an emotional painkiller. It takes away all the pain, do you know what I mean? All the emotional shit takes away pain, and that. Uh... When you realise you've got a problem, it can make your drug worse go up higher, like, do you know what I mean? You worry about everything that's the goals of the smack head, and to get up to the pain of that, you will use, like, do you know what I mean? Then I started getting into trouble with the police. Then I started going to jail. Then I met friends in jail, well, acquaintances in jail. And then when I got out, I started hanging around with them people. I started using more. I started smoking heroin. Then I started injecting heroin. And um, just things progressed worse from there, really. Not long after I started, I realised um well, I weren't warned about the dangers, people, I heard about the clack and it being addictive. And it don't take long, I think a week, and I was dependent and I was like, oh shit, feeling ill and then realising I had to take heroin to stop. <coughs> and it's in the back of your head, I think it's in the back of every heroin user's head. They're going to stop any minute, they can't take no more of this. But you just carry on, you just carry on, don't do nothing about it until the worst of the worst things happen, like, do you know what I mean? You end up right to the bottom of the pile and you've got to do something about it. You want to do something about it straight away because you realise how bad it's getting a grip on your life. But you can't do nothing about it, you don't do nothing about it. And then you've got to have a few months of that or maybe a year. Put yourself right in the bottom and things get so bad you've got to do something about it. When was it that you, you realised that your drug use had become a problem? Um, I think it was about uh, maybe a year 
a year and a half after I started taking it because one morning I woke up and I was in my, pre my, in my first relationship then and I woke up and I thought, right, enough is enough, like, you know. And um, my girlfriend arranged us to go on a little um, to Alton Towers for the weekend. And um, I just went up there and on within half a day, I started to hurt really bad. And I thought, you know, you know, what's all this going on about? Like, and then I started to be sick and then, then I realised I had a problem. And she had booked the place for three days. And within the first day, I said, I need to go home. She said, why? And then I told her, I said, look, you know, I've been using heroin and I can't stay at you. I started to get nasty with her. Never ever got violent with her, but I started to get really nasty with her. Um, I started shouting at her, started stealing off her. And that's when I thought, you know, that's not me. That's not me at all, like, you know. And that's when I, knew it was a problem, like, you know. Well, I've become a problem about three months after me taking it, because I wasn't taking that much, but after a while then I was taking more and more. And uh, I was just doing anything for it, and I didn't care then, really. That's what it is to me, so... But I knew that, and I, I didn't like it. But I just keep on doing it and doing it then. You know, you just don't wake up one day and decide, you know, like, you know, I want to be dependent on opiates. You, you sort of, you, you, you slide into that, and um, you know, self-medication is a is a term that I like to use. You know, I, f I find that opiates have done that for me. Um, I thought myself, well, you know. At the end of the day, it's only a drug. I'm a strong person because prior to that, I was in the army. See, and I thought, you know, I'm a strong person. I, I, I can do it. I, like, you know, I can do it. I can do it. And I managed. I got home. I went into my bedroom. I thought, right, I'm going to get a pile of videos in. I'm just going to stay in here and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to be ill for a couple of days. But it's not like that at all. Like, you know, it's just within twelve hours. 24 hours, you know, I was literally out the door selling my, selling things that I treasured, like, you know, and I had a chain of my mum for my 18th birthday. I sold for silly money, like 10 pounds, just so I can get a bag, you know, and then I was just selling all my, all my belongings and, and, you know, I lost, I lost everything and people were look, was looking at me different. People started, you know, not, not speaking to me and that and, you know, just, just progressed from there, really.